Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name's Sam Sweeney. Uh, I'm the Artistic Director of the National Youth Folk Ensemble. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I believe we've got people from Giggleswick Primary. Yeah, lovely. And also from Settle College, I think. Hello. <laughs> Brilliant. And also we've got people joining us from home over the internet, which is a first for us, so it's really exciting. Um, and we want to thank NIMAS for collaborating with us on this project and making it possible uh, for people to watch it at home. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about what's going to happen today. Um, a few years ago, the English Folk Dance and Song Society decided uh, quite brilliantly that it would be a fantastic thing to have a national youth folk ensemble, uh, a group of uh, young musicians aged 14 to 18, the best ones that we could find, uh, to come together for four residentials a year uh, and collaborate and make new arrangements of traditional English music. Uh, so this is the third cohort of the National Youth Folk Ensemble, and this is the fourth day of their second residential. So this is, in essence, their ninth day of being together and making music. Um, so, I hope you have a fantastic time. Uh, I hope you learn a bit about folk music. Um, I'm super proud of this lot, they're just brilliant. So please give it up for the National Youth Folk Ensemble. <laughs>
Thanks so much. Thanks a lot. It's great to be here. Um, yeah, and hello to everyone who's uh, watching or listening on, on the interweb. Um, and we're glad to be here. Uh, so that was a tune, two tunes. The first one was called Mrs. Thompson's. And the second one was called Oh, the Days When I Was Young. And um, <laughs> yeah, Oh, the Days When I Was Young. And uh, most of these tunes that we play, they're old tunes from manuscripts, uh, tune books that were compile, compiled by fiddle players sometimes like hundreds of years ago. And the next tune we're going to play is called Molly Apple Pie, which is one, one of these tunes. And it was compiled in a book by a man called William Winters. He was a shoemaker in 1850 from Somerset. And uh, I'm going to play you first the version of the tune that was written down. And then later on, Alex will explain how we've taken that tune and sort of made it our own. Uh, hello, I'm Alex. Um, so for this piece, we had three main ideas for arranging it. Um, first, we thought up um, it should have some sort of shape. So we thought um, we'd choose a hill. So it starts off very low, and it gets to a point at the top, and then it comes back down again. Um, and our second idea was that, so that we're all listening to each other, um, because we arrange in a big circle, we'd all uh, look like opposite us and pick something that someone else was doing and uh, copy that. Um, and our third rule was that it's, it's in G major, and um, so we're gonna try and avoid G major for the best part of this tune. Um, yep, hope you enjoy, Molly Apple Pie, thank you.
I'm Maeve. The next set of tunes that we're going to play for you are actually two jigs. So a jig is a type of traditional dance. Um, it's in time signature 6-8, which means it has six beats in a bar. So that can be six stomps or six claps, or you can think of it as words, so six syllables. So um, if you say with me two words with three syllables each, kangaroo wallaby, then you can get a sense of how it goes. So kangaroo wallaby, kangaroo wallaby, kangaroo wallaby, kangaroo wallaby. So you get a sense of how it can feel and what the beat's like. Um, and Laura, Rowan and Phoebe can actually demonstrate it for us. So Phoebe will play on beats one and four, and then Laura plays on all six beats of every bar, and then Rowan will put a jig tune over the top. Yes, yeah, so um, also with jigs, you can get them in different sort of tones and feels by changing the rhythms. So you can have an example of a dotted jig. Again, they'll play it. So now you've heard an example of how you play jigs, we're going to play you a couple of jigs. The first is called The Trip to Dublin, and the second is called Let's Fill Up the Glasses, and they're from Lancashire. Thank you. 
Hello, my name is Emma Reed, and I have had the great honor of working together with these young musicians all of this week as one of the guest tutors. Uh, so a couple of days ago, I taught them a tune that I wrote last autumn. It's called The Apple Processional. And with that tune, we've been exploring modal music. It's a modal tune, which means that as opposed to being a harmonic tune, where the melody is always relating to chords that are changing, uh, a modal tune is always relating to uh, the home note, which in this case, in this tune, in the A part, is a D. So we've got our D drone, and the tune is always relating to this drone. Uh, this tune is in the mixolydian mode, and we've also been exploring some improvisation uh, around the tune. So we found the most important notes in the tune, way marker notes or skeleton notes, and then we've used those as a starting point for improvisation. So here is the Apple Processional.
Hi, I'm Rosa, and so the next tune that we're going to play is a 3-2 hornpipe, and a hornpipe is a, another type of dance, just like the jig, um, and this one has three beats in the bar, so we thought you could get into the groove of it with us if you stamp along and accent the first of each three, like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then sometimes, to um, give the dance a bit more um, bounce, we like to accent the off beats. So if you could clap when you're not stamping. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. That was great. Um, so the hornpipe we're going to play for you is called the Winders Hornpipe, and it's about a family, a very musical family from Lancashire, um, who they wrote a lot of manuscripts. So this is from their collection, and it's yeah, it's great. Thank you very much for coming. This is our last set. Um, I, yeah. Um, it's been great. Thank you to all our tutors and Rob on the sound and everything. It's been a great couple of weeks and yeah, it's amazing. So thank you very much.
the National Youth Folk Ensemble. Give it up for them, yes. Woo! Lovely, thank you so much. Um, with the remaining time that we've got before the interval, I believe um, we're taking questions about this whole folk music thing and what you might have just seen. Uh, so, is Emily around? Oh, here you are. There's lights on you now. <laughs> Lovely. Hello. Hi. Cool. Any giggles, wick or settle questions? Yeah. How long did it take them to learn all of the tunes? Okay. Um, Maeve, maybe would you answer that question? Uh, so just a bit of sort of backstory. So we like to learn stuff by ear predominantly. So like kind of Sam or another tutor will play a small phrase of a song and then we'll play it back and it's just like... It kind of like sort of tennis with the tune, so you get it really strong in your mind and your memory. Um, to learn these tunes, well, we started learning the first one, um, yeah, on the first residential, so back in October, and then we started learning, um, yeah, about another the other half of the set just now uh, at the start of this residential, so sort of earlier this week, really. <laughs> Are there any other questions anywhere? Yeah. How long has it taken you to practice for this concert? Who would like to answer that? Emily, could you answer that question? Wicked. Well, on the residentials, we've been practicing every day, but we don't spend every day, all day, practicing, obviously. Uh, we have lots of other activities which are really enjoyable. But So, yeah, two residentials we've spent learning these tunes, and that's how long we've spent practicing for this. Has anyone else got a question? Yes. How do you feel when you're performing these tunes? Whew. Greg? Um, I think every one of us loves performing. Um, it's just something that we all enjoy. Um, so yeah, we just have great fun, really. <laughs> Anyone else feel anything profoundly different to Greg? <laughs> Anyone else got another answer? Have you got an answer, Rosa? Come on. So we do spend a lot of time playing together, so it really feels like natural. So when we're playing, it's not stressful, I would say. Like right now, it's just a lot of fun. We're not like, ah. <laughs> it's like, it just kind of, flows out of us and it's a lot of fun to really get in the zone and connect with people. Cool. And it, this is fun, isn't it? I don't know, I'm having a lovely time. Are there any other questions? Oh, yeah. Um, how long has the group been together? How long has the group been together? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, this, this particular group, I'll just sort of answer it if I, if I can. This particular group have been together, uh, this is the end of their second course, and they do four in total. So this lot have been together for about ten days in total. But the National Youth Folk Ensemble has been uh, running, this is its third year. Um, so long may it continue. And maybe some of you could, like, get involved when you're a bit older. That would be great. Uh, any other questions in the order talk? Yes. For the repertoire. What is the selection process for the repertoire? Oh, to get into the ensemble. What is the selection process to get into the ensemble? Um, I suppose I'm the only one who can talk about that. Uh, <laughs> Um, okay, the selection process. We do a, um, a little tour in May half term, and uh, myself and Rob Harbron, who's at the back, uh, and Miranda Rutter, who's taught on the, on the courses before, and Sarah Jones, who's the programme manager, 
uh, of the National Youth Folk Ensemble working for EFDSS. Uh, we go on a little tour around the country uh, trying to cover as much of the country as we can uh, and we meet loads of young musicians who play any, any instrument. Uh, some have got experience of playing folk music, some haven't. Uh, and we don't ask for a particular standard on these sampler days that we go on. So this year we met over 90 young musicians. Uh, and we have a, a day of free workshops where anyone can get involved. And we learn some tunes and we have some fun and play music together. And then some of those people will be asked to come and have an audition in London in the summer. And then of those people who audition, uh, some of those get to spend a year in the ensemble. Uh, and I suppose the criteria really, because we're not, I guess we're very different to an orchestra in the sense that we don't have, you know, it's not like get grade eight on your instrument and you're in. Um, we're kind of looking for other things. It's such a collaborative group that we really look for musicians who we feel uh, will benefit from the course uh, in a sort of collaborative way, people who are really ready to embrace the collaborative nature of the, of the project. Um, and also, I guess, we're looking for people who, have, who we feel have a huge amount of potential uh, that this course could help them to fulfill. Does that help? Great. Lovely. One more. One final question. Uh, maybe for one of them lot. <laughs> yeah. The lowest grade... Uh, has anyone in the National Youth Folk Ensemble got no grades on their instrument? Like no A, B, R, S, M, or Trinity grades? Yeah. There aren't any. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the, the, the kind of the thing with this is we, there are, we've had people in previous uh, cohorts of the National Youth Folk Ensemble who've never had a sort of lesson, a classical lesson as such. Some people are very self-taught or some people have had folk teachers and there's no folk grades really. Um, so yeah, we don't ask for any kind of grade uh, level. Um, we just sort of invite anyone to come along to the audition process and then, and then we hope that we meet some fantastic musicians like this lot. So brilliant. Well, that was a giggle, wasn't it? Um, wonderful. So uh, what's going to happen next is we're going to have a bit of an interval um, for 15 minutes um, and then Leverett uh, will come back and do a, a bit of a gig for you. So thank you so much for being so attentive and just give it up one more time for the National Youth Folk Ensemble. <laughs>
how lovely. I have to say, I'm a, I'm a very big fan of a hubbub before a gig, and you were right up there. That was absolutely fantastic. Thank you. We're going to play you some uh, lovely tunes.
Thank you very much. So yeah, we are, we call ourselves Leverett, which is a baby hair, or a hair under the age of one year, which I think that makes it a baby. And uh, yeah, and we just play a, tunes, and we don't, we work in a slightly unusual way in that we don't have any arrangements. We've not got together beforehand and sorted out who's gonna play, who's, which part, and what the parts are gonna be. So we just sit down, we have the tune, and usually I count in, give it a little count, and then we all start. And sometimes, very occasionally, I count in, and no one starts, which is quite amusing. So those were two tunes. Uh, the first was called Unan Unanimity. I can never say it. We nearly called our latest record Unanimity, but realised that neither, none of us could really say it clearly. Uh, so that's the first. That was the first tune. And the second tune was called King George the Third. Lovely. And now here's a, a another old. It's not quite a three-two hornpipe that they demonstrated in the first half so well. Um, it's a tune called White Friars Hornpipe. And then after that, a tune called Perlongs. Lovely. They have some great names, these tunes. If you, uh, if you happen to know what a Perlongs is, we'd love to know. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Uh, we're we're going to play you a, a lovely old tune called The Chirping of the Lark. Uh, only chirping in the book that we found it in is spelled C-H-E-R-P-I-N-G. Uh, it's from a book called Playford's English Dancing Master. It was first published in 1651. Uh, and I thought I might explain why Andy has changed instruments, and it's because all of his uh, accordions are diatonic, they're in different keys, uh, whereas my instrument is chromatic, so I, don't, I only need the one. Uh, can anyone tell me what this is called? Two points for the full name. <laughs> I uh, nice that somebody knows. Anyone? Uh, Sam? Sam? I think a member of the National Youth Folk Ensemble should tell Rob what his instrument is. I've just <laughs> forgotten. It's been a busy week and I've, I've forgotten. That's exactly Very right. Good. It's an English concertina, so there you go.
Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. We'll play some more tunes. Um, a lot of the stuff that we play is really old, um, like the National Youth Folk Ensemble. Uh, we play tunes, you know, from sort of the middle of the 17th century uh, to, to now. Um, and the last record that we made was a, a load of tunes that we'd written. Uh, so we'll play two of those for you now. Um, the way we like to write tunes, uh, we all go for walks uh, to beautiful places. And then maybe if inspiration takes us, we take out our phone and sing it into the phone uh, and then send it to each other. Um, so the first tune I wrote in the, in the forest behind the farm where I live. Uh, and the bit of forest is called Proud Grove. So this first tune is called Proud Grove and I wrote it walking through the forest. And then Rob wrote the second tune in a place called Corton Ridge, uh, which is fairly high up and quite windy. So the recording that he made into his phone of himself singing this tune <laughs> is, um, is something a bit like... <laughs> like that. Um, so there you go. Proud Grove and Corton Ridge.
Thank you very much. We'll play you two more traditional tunes. Uh, first one is from a book from Saddleworth in Lancashire. Uh, the book's called The Plain Brown Tune Book, although it's got a blue cover. Uh, and this tune is called Ellis Knowles Number no. 2. Ellis Knowles was a fiddle player uh, from Saddleworth. There's quite a few tunes in that book from him. Uh, and the second tune is called The Honeymoon. Um, it's actually all one, uh, se separate words, honey, moon, and the honeymoon is the the full moon that happens in June or May, maybe. Anyway, this tune's from Gloucestershire, and um, sometimes when you find a tune in a manuscript, it's totally great and ready to go straight away, and sometimes when you play it, you feel like it needs a little bit of, little bit of work, and this tune had a little bit of work to get it into the form you hear it in. Thank you. 
We're trying to work out if we've got time to play two things, but we can't find our phones, so we're just going to play two things. <laughs> Thanks. I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, this is a tune called Dundas. Dundas is a really beautiful place on the canal down in Somerset, and I wrote this tune when I was there.
Thanks so much. Thanks very much indeed. Uh, we've got a couple more tunes for you in a set. Um, and uh, we've got a couple of friends who'd really like to invite on stage. Um, so uh, us three, we've been teaching uh, and working with the National Youth Folk Ensemble here in Giggleswick all week. Um, but we've also had two other fantastic members of the tutor staff. So please welcome Emma Reed and Sam Partridge. <laughs> Lovely. Um, uh, so we'll play a couple of tunes that Rob here uh, wrote. The first one's called Rain on the Woodpile, and the second one is called Terminus. Uh, so we'll have a go at these for you. Before we disappear, um, I'd just like to say a couple more thanks. Um, we'd really like to thank, uh, well, obviously, the English Folk Dance and Song Society uh, and Arts Council England for making the National Youth Folk Ensemble uh, a thing, a thing that's possible to do. We'd like to thank them. Uh, we'd really like to thank Nymaz for making this thing happen and for doing a, a streamed gig. Yeah. Pretty cool. <laughs> you can also uh, watch this whole performance. If you're watching at home, you can watch it again. Uh, at connectresound.live. Is that right? Yeah. So you can watch that again. Um, and we'd also like to thank... I can't quite remember. Uh, some other people um, for making this wonderful thing a possibility. If you go uh, to the NIMAS website, um, uh, you can sort of see all of the wonderful people involved and the wonderful projects that they do. If you are watching this at home and you are interested in the whole folk music thing, or indeed if you're here in the audience and you're interested in this folk music thing, um, the sampler days, the free workshop days that we do uh, for the National Youth Folk Ensemble are coming up in May half term. Uh, and it's free and it's a really nice fun day, uh, regardless of whether you want to be in the National Youth Folk Ensemble or not. You can come along and have a wonderful day of making lovely folk music. So thank you so much, and we'll see you again. Cheers. <laughs>